This week on Vaticano, discover how the rise in artificial intelligence and advanced robotics has shaped the early 21st century. It has even led certain thinkers to call our era a precipice because of the existential risk these technologies pose to humanity. In this Vaticano special, we explore the spiritual ramifications of these technological changes and examine how the Catholic Church can guide the conversation. Vaticano starts now. Christ is more of an artist than the artists. He works in the living spirit and the living flesh. He makes men instead of statues. Vincent van Gogh. Art is one of the most defining aspects of human civilization. From the dawn of time to our modern era, art has often showcased our highest ideals of beauty and technical prowess. As the great English art historian Kenneth Clark has said many times on his famous program, Civilization, to look back at the history of art is to look at the journal of mankind as it marches through time, highlighting man's desires, fears, and beliefs. Francis has reflected this sentiment about art and the importance of beauty, saying on February the 17th of this year, that beauty can touch in everyone what is universal, especially the thirst for God, crossing the limits of language and culture. The Holy Father places an important role on the authentic artist because he is able to speak about God better than anyone else. Where does our need to create art come from? From the undefinable conflict of emotions inside of us, resulting from the pain and routine of daily life? Or is it from someplace deeper, where we try to visualize our suffering and place that value into a place of worship and ritual? Historically, it can be seen that suffering, lack, and limitation are great incentives for human beings to create. Now this seems to go against a purely materialistic and Darwinian view of human evolution. A very poignant example is found in Van Gogh, who, in one of his letters, expresses his suffering at not being able to have a family, not being able to have children, and how this drives him to generate thoughts instead of children. And this fact, nevertheless, makes him a part of the human family. There are obviously different levels of artistic experiences and representations of beauty. Some are banal and commercial, others are simple yet meaningful. And then there are those representations of beauty that it seems we see less and less of but still call us. Those uniquely powerful and complex works of art that seem to confuse the modern mind, yet speak to our soul. Sometimes we have to discover meaning in things that may appear ugly at first glance, that even cause us to look away, to look the other way. Now the reference to Christ crucified seems logical to me. Christ crucified is certainly not a beautiful or pleasant sight, yet there is a beauty in the crucifix that is at a deeper level than what can be perceived by the senses. There is a formal, theological, and metaphysical beauty. As the benefits of modern science make our life easier, 
though the cost for this privileged existence of relative ease is that at times we feel as if we are cogs in the machine, slowly becoming more machine-like, then it begs the question, if we are becoming more machine-like, then is our art becoming more machine-like as well? La meccanizzazione è sempre stata un rischio, per così dire. Mechanization of the creative process has always been a risk for art. Precisely because mechanization would seem to be the opposite of creativity. Creativity is free and unfettered, while mechanization is rigidly structured. The algorithm is not free to create, but rather learns a seemingly free process and replicates it. What the algorithm cannot or fails to grasp, however, is the innovative component in the use of rules, and thus the creative innovation, the rule breaking that cannot be taught. An algorithm cannot be taught about rule breaking precisely because such creative breaking is something that exceeds, or at least I think at present exceeds, the performance of a machine. So if the primary factor in the creation of art is the innovative spirit to surpass the permitted boundaries, then one wonders if this creative spark is something that could ever be replicated in artificial intelligence. I am rather skeptical because, actually, what seems to me to be characteristic of humans is precisely this spontaneous tendency to create. Creativity is a necessity for human beings. Just look at children. Children, starting from a few months of age, begin to draw and create. Now, I don't think there is an essential difference between a child expressing themselves through a drawing and God expressing himself by creating the universe. This drive to create something that is independent of us, that makes us somehow eternal, is typical of the human being created in the image and likeness of God. In a few moments, we'll be back with more on Vaticano. Humanity stands at a unique moment in time. The rise in automation, digital connectivity, and advanced robotics have shaped the early 21st century. This fourth industrial revolution has brought about unparalleled civilizational changes in the span of years, not centuries. Artificial intelligence has been one of the primary drivers of this transformation and will continue to play a more central role as time goes by. The dominant view in Silicon Valley and the media is that things, including machines, can be considered intelligent merely by virtue of what they're able to do, regardless of what they actually are. So if a computer were hypothetically able to do everything that a human brain could do, it would be considered conscious. This, of course, is different from what the church teaches on intelligence and human consciousness. The definition of artificial intelligence is complex, but we tend to use metaphors that refer to the human mind. We can think of artificial intelligence as a system that we make to solve problems, solving problems in order to serve humans. The latest iteration of artificial intelligence is now known as the metaverse. Augmented reality, virtual reality, etc. is based on artificial intelligence technologies and only multiplies the challenges. 
you need specific skills, but you also need an understanding of this new dimension because new technologies come from man and man is a technical being. We always say in the classroom that man is naturally technical. Technology is not bad, it is born good as human beings are born good. As technology continues to take on more human activities and gain intelligence, it begs further digging into what intelligence means. And if computational intelligence is something that computers will eventually be able to supersede humans in, then what about the entire realm of emotional intelligence and other aspects of human life, such as sacrifice, loyalty, and meaningful relationships? Artificial intelligence is an almost natural evolution of what had been the original idea of a computer and does exactly what we were trying to accomplish at the origin. That is, it materializes the computational capabilities of our brain. The risk is if we reduce our understanding of ourselves and of our intelligence, then it is obvious that we will find ourselves afraid of these machines. The stakes are high. Dr. Christoph Koch at a conference on AI hosted by the Vatican warned that by mid-century, humanity will be surrounded by ubiquitous, flexible, highly intelligent, autonomous agents, and this will profoundly affect our future, including whether we have any. That is why the Pontifical Academy for Life, along with Microsoft, IBM, and others, signed a 2020 declaration calling for the ethical and responsible use of AI. Most importantly, Pope Francis has invited Catholics around the world to pray that robotics and artificial intelligence remain always at the service of human beings. Intelligence is our most important resource. Most problems in the world have some intelligent solution. Because of this, major companies and nations are spending an enormous amount of energy and capital doing research on artificial intelligence in order to find out how to maximize accessible intelligence. The fear is that we are collectively racing towards something that we do not fully understand. Electronic circuits function a million times faster than biochemical ones. So hypothetically, a machine could think about a million times faster than the minds that built it. Pope Francis has often called us to use our intelligence to take the time to reflect and understand the signs of the times. The problem is, what happens if the times we're living in start to become dictated by the invisible value pushes and disappearance of competing points of views by machines and other intelligent circuit-based entities that do not share our best interests. Given what's at stake, we spoke with Professor Paolo Soda from the Campus Biomedico University of Rome to better understand what future those working on AI see for our collective species. I understand the perception of risk that many people may have. It is like when there was the first industrial revolution. The advent of machines, like the steam engine, completely changed the ways of production and invented new paradigms. There have been several revolutions, and now we have arrived at the fourth industrial revolution. Here, artificial intelligence is the protagonist of this fourth industrial revolution. I believe that if humans are always at the center of this development, paying attention, we will not run this risk. It is useful to look at other industrial revolutions to compare what we're going through now with artificial intelligence, but it seems that the very essence of intelligence is being threatened to be outsourced and begs the question of what value is intellectual work? 
At the moment, we're in the field of narrow artificial intelligence. But what is narrow artificial intelligence exactly? Let us say, at this time, we are in the so-called narrow artificial intelligence. That is, artificial intelligence to solve a very specific problem. But to use the example of smartphones, we use facial recognition techniques or fingerprint recognition to unlock our devices. So this artificial intelligence is not able to solve general problems. The algorithms that are available today are capable of learning specific contexts, albeit with some breadth. Think of speech recognition, natural language processing. We are still in a specific domain. In a decade, we will probably go towards general artificial intelligence, situations where artificial intelligence will be able to harmonize together heterogeneous information from even different domains. And to focus on the big issues, we must have a stable bearing on our humanity and our history. Giacinto Baresi is a researcher in collaboration with the Campus Biomedico in Rome, who focuses on the relationship between the human and the robotic. We spoke to him about the digital era that's already enveloping us and the coming seductions and predicaments that await us all with the power and hypnotic prowess of future AI systems. How will we as humans orient ourselves in that kind of world? In many ways, we cannot think of the human being without the history, nor humanity as a whole, not the individual, without the history. This history has a past that needs to be remembered. It has a future that needs to be shaped according to the value that each of us has. So, principle that are based on morals, on morals that can be different with their certain limits, always on respecting the other, and always on making sure that you never do to others what you would not want done to yourself. It becomes a guideline. In fact, not a technical guideline, but a guideline, a principle that should be followed in setting up any of these technologies, because they are action potentials. Ultimately, our safety and our sanity requires us to return to a better understanding of ourselves. As René Girard says, humanity is a child of religion. There lies our history and our understanding of ourselves. It will be necessary for us to keep balance during the coming technological changes. In a few moments, we'll be back with more on Vaticano. So, by the way, Benjamin, I, I, I printed out the essay. I gave it to my professor of medieval philosophy. And I said, uh, what, what grade would you give this text? Uh, and he says, meh, B minus. Really? <laughs> Chat GPT got a B minus from my professor of medieval <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> so, and then I told him, I said, this was generated by an AI. No, an AI could never do something like this. And I said, try it. <laughs> try it. And he did. And he's scared. Rapid progress in artificial intelligence is generating fear as well as excitement. These questions were asked in an open letter from the NGO Future of Life Institute. It called for a six-month pause in the creation of the most advanced forms of artificial intelligence and was signed by tech luminaries, including Elon Musk. 
It's the most prominent example yet of how rapid progress in AI has sparked anxiety about the potential dangers of the technology. The latest innovation in the artificial intelligence space is ChatGPT. It's exhibiting unprecedented capabilities from crafting essays and fiction to designing websites and writing code. I think that the large platforms are developing uh, the, these technologies at a uh, increasingly uh, fast rate. The, the, the most famous and the best program out there now is ChatGPT, which is the uh, artificial intelligence project of OpenAI. Uh, however, there are other programs coming out within a few months, and, and I've been told uh, when I was in San Francisco uh, two months ago, that these programs are going to make ChatGPT look like, uh, uh, like primitive software. Language is the operating system of human culture. It's our source code. From language emerges myth and law art and science, friendships and nations. AI's new mastery of language means it can now hack and manipulate the operating system of civilization. What would it mean for humans to live in a world where a large percentage of stories, images, laws, policies and tools are shaped by non-human intelligence? What gives you hope, but at the same time, what are you genuinely preoccupied? Uh, the, the problem is about control. Uh, how much control do we have over, over these, uh, th th these programs, basically? And in GPT, the G stands for generative. So what's taking place is that it, it, these artificial intelligence are learning, if we want to use that word, uh, and they're growing and they're expanding on their own in a way that we don't even know how to map out. So even the engineers aren't sure how GPT is solving some of the problems that they, they give it. The degree of existential risk posed by AI has been hotly debated. Should we be afraid of this? And I think the answer is yes and no. Uh, the potential misuse of this technology is a real uh, reason for, for us to be concerned. This powerful technology poses new risks, but also offers extraordinary opportunities. Balancing the two means treading carefully. It's really not a question of good and evil. It's a question of how can we support human beings, so like you said, Pope Francis has mentioned also, um, place the human being at the center of the technology. And so what people look at the Vatican, the, the, the developers are looking at the Vatican for a moral uh, guide, a, a kind of moral authority. The Pope is probably the number one moral authority in the world.